So by the day of collapse, that project had been underway for approximately two months. Construction materials, equipment, and vehicles had been parked directly above node U10 West, with the heaviest portion, piles of aggregate, weighing in at nearly 400,000 pounds, being within closest proximity to the soon-to-be failure point. Traffic was also reportedly bumper to bumper, as it was both near rush hour and, due to construction, the road work made the bridge somewhat of a bottleneck. Once this node gave way, since this was a fracture critical or non-load path redundant bridge, total collapse of the main deck was inevitable. With fractures of the other weakest points, the other U10 nodes following shortly thereafter as the main deck gave way. According to the Federal Highway Administration of those 19,273 bridges in the U.S. that are considered non-load path redundant, about 465 of them have a main span that is a steel deck truss. And as of the NTSB's report in 2008, because current American Association of State and Highway Transportation Officials guidance directs bridge owners to rate their bridges when significant changes occur, but not before they place new bridges in service, the load carrying capacity of new bridges may not be verified before they are open to traffic. Had American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials guidance included gusset plates in load ratings, there would have been multiple opportunities to detect the inadequate capacity of the U10 gusset plates of the I-35W bridge deck truss.